Let us join together in our responsive reading. Happy are those who take delight in the law of the Lord. They are like trees planted by streams of water, and all that they do, they prosper. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous. May God number us with the righteous as we worship. Let us worship God. Let us pray together. We seek to dwell in your presence, O God, and behold evermore the warmth of your love. For you shelter your people during their time of adversity. You cradle them in your arms when they are afraid and lonely. You beckon us to embrace you and put an end to our fearfulness. Entering your sanctuary, we give you praise for your mercy. Be pleased with our worship as we honor your name. Amen. Please rise as you are able for our hymn of praise, How Great Thou Art, hymn number 77.
Let us affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. invite our ushers to the front to take our morning offering. We thank you for your faithfulness and generosity. You continue to give faithfully and we give you thanks. You're welcome to give online or you can send a check to the church or you can give today. Let's ask God's blessing upon the offering. Gracious providing God, we honor and praise you for how you watch over and take care of us throughout the seasons of our lives. Truly, you are faithful. Lord, help us to give back to you cheerfully. We ask your blessing upon the tithes and offerings that are given. May this money go to help strengthen your church and this community and throughout the world. In the strong name of Christ, we ask. Amen.
in preparation, number 156. I love to tell the story. be seated. 
Let us listen now as we go to God in prayer. Gracious, holy, loving God, we come before you with gratitude and praise in our hearts. How great thou art indeed. We come before you with the needs we see in the world, for the ongoing pandemic, for all suffering and recovering from disaster, both natural and man-made. May all come to see your movement in the world, Open our eyes so we might be part of your healing work. We come before you as your disciples, seeking to become more like you, to learn from you and follow in your ways. Give us wisdom to see how we might encourage one another on our journeys. We pray all this in your Son's name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
beautiful. Our scripture reading for today comes from Mark chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. It says there, They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Melanie. Melanie and I have been preaching a series on discipleship, and today we come to the end of that series based upon the book, Disciple Like Jesus by Phil Maynard and Eddie Pipkin. They point out that one of the most spiritual people throughout human history was Mahatma Gandhi. And Gandhi was known as saying that he liked Christ, but he did not like Christians because he believed that Christians are so unlike Christ. Isn't that painfully true? Why do you think that is? Now, one of the reasons, perhaps, is that Christ's value of greatness and how so often Christians value greatness is so different. How do we value greatness? How do we see greatness? Do we look to power, prestige, honor, money? So often we look at celebrities, athletes, great figures. That's where greatness is to be found. Think about 20 years ago yesterday, 9-11, a day that scarred this land forever. Where were you 20 years ago yesterday? I'll never forget, I was holding my son Luke, watching the TV, could not believe what was happening, watching plane fly into the World Trade Center in New York City. My son, Luke, now, he's grown so he would have to hold me. (laughs) Hmm. Think about that. And we saw how first responders, how they ran towards danger when everyone else was fleeing for their lives. That spirit of service is embodied by our local first responders. And we thank you for your service. And we want you to know that we are praying for you because you have a difficult job. Our Lord honored service. If we want to be great, we must be willing to be a servant. So when you think about greatness and the greatest, what comes to your mind? Fly like a butterfly, sting like a bee, declared Muhammad Ali, the greatest heavyweight fighter of them all. I think about my next door neighbor, Glenn Woods. He was great. He was great in football, he was great in school, his family was wealthy, he seemed to have it all. Greatness, how do we define it? When you think about that, do we define it the way the world defines greatness? Or is our standard for greatness Jesus Christ? Jesus, in our passage today, we see his purpose, that he came to die. We see how puzzled he must have been as he overhears the disciples jockeying for position, discussing which one of them was the greatest. Jesus, he shares a children's lesson, putting a child up, honoring service. If you want to be great in the kingdom of God, you must be willing to be a servant of all. 
Jesus was traveling through Galilee on his way to Caesarea Philippi, on his way to Jerusalem. He wasn't giving them a new teaching, but he was reminding them once again that he was going to die. Wow. These were powerful, painful words. Jesus was revealing to them his purpose, his focus, his mission. As United Methodists, we have a mission to make disciples for the transformation of the world. We are living through challenging days with this pandemic. I think it's even more so important for us to be aware of our purpose, our direction, our focus, and all the other distractions all around us, to remember who we are and whose we are. And Jesus, he's letting them know that he will be handed over to sinful hands and that he will die. And on the third day, he will rise again. The context of what was going on, Jesus and Peter, James, and John had just come back from the Mount of Transfiguration, and a father brought his son to Jesus. Some commentaries refer that the boy had epilepsy. It would often throw him in water or the fire to kill him. Sounds like an early 911 call. What do you think? Maybe so. This father was in need for his son to be cured. But the disciples are unable to help the boy. And Jesus, when he returns, he blows up. He says, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? So often our Lord points out our lack of faith. And he goes on to share with them that the first will be last. And to be great is to be a servant, a servant of all. Service, service, service. And Jesus was not just paying lip service to service. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Matthew 20, 28. Jesus, when he came back to Caesarea Philippi, he stayed at the house of Peter. Now, before, when the disciples had gone out on mission, they had come back and they were looking to Jesus, their tutor, for guidance and discernment of what to do. But this time was different. Jesus couldn't help but overhear their discussion. You ever been talking about something you knew you shouldn't be talking about? Don't worry, I want to ask you to raise your hand. Have you ever got caught with your hand in the cookie jar? I sure have. Think about what they were saying. They were over here talking about who amongst us is the greatest. And Jesus, he had just been saying to them, I'm going to die. He must have been puzzled. He had been about discipling relationships. And here they were so far off with understanding the life and mission of Jesus. He came to serve. In the book, Disciple Like Jesus, Maynard and Pipkin point out that discipleship is not just information, but it is transformation. About changed behavior, changed life. And because we follow Jesus Christ, we are to live as his faithful disciples. We are called to think deeply about greatness. How do we define greatness? Oh, this affects how we interact in our conversations. It affects how we live as disciples and how we mentor others to be disciples. In the book, Disciple Like Jesus, Maynard and Pip can point out, who are we discipling? Who are we helping to mentor in the faith of Jesus Christ? It's so important that we have others that we're helping to grow and mature in the faith. Who is the greatest? Can't you just picture this scene? Peter perhaps puffed his chest out. Now, you all know I'm the greatest. I'm the leader. I'm the spokesman. Or what about James and John, the sons of thunder, 
They wanted seats of honor when Jesus came into his glory. But what about Judas? He was known as the most educated of the group. He was the one our Lord entrusted with the money. Maybe he thought he was the greatest. Think about this. This is the scene going on just after Jesus shared with them that he was going to die. He must have been puzzled. How do we define greatness? Mother Teresa said, the Christian life is not about doing great things. It is about doing small things with great love. We are called to serve all. Karl Barth pointed out, the great theologian, that we are to be about radical hospitality, radical to serve all people in the name of Christ. And when we do that, that is the basis of Christian ethics. To think about the most violent, the most odd, the most difficult person as the brother or sister of Jesus, a son or daughter of God. And to live with that assumption changes everything. The disciples, they had a view of greatness that must have gone along with this world, of power, prestige, and honor, of distinction. But Jesus, he defines greatness in a completely different way. What about us? How are we about discipling relationships? What if, as disciples of Jesus Christ, and as a church, we define greatness by service? I'm so thankful what a serving church this is with our flower ministry and the super day and our grief group, let us continue to grow and build bridges to our community. To be a church known for serving others in the name of Christ. Jesus, he welcomed a child and he lifts up a child. How shocked the disciples must have been because children, as wonderful as they are, they are in need. They are, they are dependent. They are not independent. And Jesus, he lifts up a child and honors a child in the midst of them. When I was a child, I used to hear a lot that children are to be seen and not heard. You ever heard that? I see some of you. The same upbringing, I suppose, huh? But this goes right along with Jesus' understanding of greatness. What he was saying here is that look after Look for those that you can serve, not for those that need your help. Look for those that you need to serve, not for those that you can get something from. In so doing, we are seeking the kingdom of God. Who are those people all around us who are in need, like children, that need our help? How do we define greatness? How are we about discipling relationships and caring for people in the name of Christ with those all around us. Lee Corso, one of the announcers at College Game Day, when he was the football coach in Indiana University, football coach at a basketball school, he had a walk-on named Tom. And Tom was overweight, wasn't very athletic, wasn't really fast, and he didn't make the team. But he continued to hang out, still wonder relationship with Corso. Now, when Corso left the university, the only one that was there to see him off was Tom. And Corso shared what he learned from his relationship with Tom is that everyone treats well. The great quarterback, the light, great linebacker, great running back, but the true test of character is how you treat those that you do not need or you cannot use. Greatness. Discipling relationships. Serving others in the name of Jesus. That's what we are called to do. And I give thanks for our first responders and how they serve. Let us take time to be holy and to serve in the name of Christ, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, 
Amen. Please stand as we sing together a hymn invitation. Take time to be holy. Hymn number 395.